Welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm showing you the Instant Pot Blender and three recipes you can make while using it. So my name is Kristen and I am the second sister from SixSisterStuff.com. So a few weeks ago, Instant Pot, the company, reached out and was wondering if I would try out the new Instant Pot blender. Now if you know me, I am slightly obsessed with Instant Pot products, so I was so excited to try out this new product. Now my first thoughts were was that this is just any normal blender, when actually it blew away my expectations. It, it's awesome. The thing about this blender is that it can blend things on like a cool setting, but it can also blend things on a hot setting. So one of the recipes that I'm making is a tomato soup, and I literally threw everything in and it cooked the soup while it blended it. So it's kind of like the Instant Pot where you just kind of put it on, you walk away, and it does all the work for you. I'm gonna show you what comes with the Instant Pot Blender, and then I'm gonna show you the three recipes that I've made with it, and it's not your normal smoothie. I'm making chocolate banana muffins, I'm making a tomato basil soup, and then I'm making some easy blender salsa. All right guys, if you're ready, let's get cooking. So I wasn't sure what to expect when pulling out the Instant Pot, but I realized, you know, this blender is a heavy duty, nice blender. It can hold up to 60 ounces, which is about the average size of a normal blender. I was really impressed of how sturdy it was. Like you can tell it was a nice one. It wasn't cheap plastic. It also has eight blades to chop everything up. Now the blender base kind of reminded me of an Instant Pot. It had different functions and you just push a button. The lid, I love the lid because it screws on and it, the machine won't work unless the lid's on correctly. They also have this little thing that will push the food down so it will blend correctly. Um, the other things that come in here is a little brush because when the Instant Pot gets hot, it does leave a little bit of residue, so you'll, you're able to clean up the residue and just and just clean the blender easier. And then, of course, it comes with a manual. And the other thing that surprised me that came out was a strainer bag. So you can make, like, almond milk or other things and use that strainer bag to make smooth milk. Now, one thing that's so different about this blender is that it has a temperature gauge. You can do hot things and cold things. There's some things like a smoothie, crushed ice, frozen desserts that are obviously cold. But there are a lot of things you can make that are warm. So today I'm going to start off by making my homemade blender salsa. So first you're going to chop up one jalapeno. Now I don't like to add the seeds because I don't like it hot because my kids won't eat it, but you can add the seeds if you want. Next we're going to add half of an onion, just chop it into big chunks. Next we're going to add two cans of diced tomatoes, one tablespoon of lemon juice, there's the jalapeno, a little bit of cilantro, and then of course our onion. So now we're ready to blend, so just match up those little holes with the prongs. Then we're going to add in our two cans of diced tomatoes. Then on top of that, you're going to add the one tablespoon of lemon juice. Then just throw in the rest of your chopped vegetables. Now make sure you seal and lock your lid correctly or it won't blend. Okay, so I'm going to push the pulse button and we have options. We have low, which is two minutes, medium, five minutes, and high, eight minutes. So I'm going to stick with low because I don't need this to blend very much. Once you push the two, it will beep three times and then just start blending. Now I didn't need this to blend very long so I stopped it before the two minutes was up because it's salsa. I want a few chunks in there. So I pulled the lid off and it smells amazing. So I'm just pouring it into my serving bowls and then I just serve it with some of my favorite chips. It really was so easy to throw this salsa together. The second recipe is my roasted tomato basil soup. So you're going to start by chopping up nine tomatoes just into quarters or large chunks. Next, you're going to take a half of an onion and again, chop it into chunks. Then you're going to put it on a cookie sheet. I lined mine with foil and added some salt and pepper. And then I added about two tablespoons of olive oil and just kind of mixed the oil around so it would cover both the tomatoes and the onions. Go ahead and spread them out. Then you're going to roast them in the oven at 400 degrees for 25 minutes. And it smells absolutely amazing in here. So now you're just going to take the tomatoes and the onions and we're going to put them in the bottom of the blender. Now this soup is so easy, we just have a few steps left. So we're going to add a half a cup of cream, a little bit of butter, some salt and pepper to taste, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then about oh, 14 or 16 leaves of basil, depending on how much you want. So now we're just going to add everything in. So I put in my cream. You can use milk if you want. I added the four tablespoons of butter, the basil leaves, 
the salt, the pepper, and then of course the one teaspoon of onion powder. And that is all there is to it. So now I'm gonna put on the lid. I love this lid because it locks like right into place so you know it will work. Next I'm gonna push the soup function. This is a hot function so it's gonna cook for about 22 minutes and then the last two minutes or so it's going to blend together. So it's gonna get up to 100 degrees Celsius. We're already about 10 minutes into it and it will pulse every few minutes but it really is just heating up all of my soup and cooking everything together. And my husband probably thought I was crazy because I could not stop talking about how awesome it was that this would heat up and cook my soup. All right, with two minutes left, it started to blend together and just make it the perfect texture. I think my favorite part was is that I can put it in, push the soup button, and then just walk away. All right, when it's done, it will actually spell out that it's done. Now be careful, it is pretty hot on the glass, so use the plastic when lifting up your blender. So I took the lid off and oh my gosh, this soup smells so good. I love that it has like a creamy orange color. It's not like bright red because of the cream. Now if you wanna use milk, you could and it would be a little more red. Now for toppings, I like to add Parmesan. You could sprinkle a little bit more basil on top. It really just depends on what you like. But this soup is so creamy and so good. Your family's gonna love it. Now for the last recipe, we're making blender muffins. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now to make this recipe, you'll need two eggs, one teaspoon of baking powder, two teaspoons of vanilla, one cup of natural peanut butter, a little bit of salt, a half cup of Hershey's cocoa, about a fourth a cup of water, two bananas, three fourths cup of Quaker oats, and a half a cup of honey. And don't worry, all these recipe links are in the description below. Now because this batter is kind of thick, we want to start with the liquidy items first. So we're going to add the two eggs right into the bottom of the blender. Next I'm going to add the fourth cup of water. If you need more water later on, you can add a little more. Next I'm going to add my two bananas. Now I highly suggest using ripe bananas, it will blend a lot easier. Then you can use normal peanut butter or natural peanut butter. And yeah, I'm struggling with the peanut butter today. It's a cup of peanut butter into your blender. Then you're gonna add 3 fourths cup of old-fashioned oats and a half a cup of honey. Now I'm eyeballing my honey because I like a little more than what it suggests. Then go ahead and add a half a cup of cocoa and we are almost ready to blend, just a few more things. So we need about two teaspoons of vanilla. You can add one more teaspoon if you'd like. And then go ahead and add one teaspoon of baking powder. And for the very last thing, just add a little bit of salt. It's about a half a teaspoon, but again, I eyeballed it. All right, we are officially ready to blend this up. So go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure that it's on all the way so it will blend. Now I'm going to do the pulse again and just try for the low setting. So we're going for two. We're going to see where this gets us. So after you set it, you just have to wait for the three beeps, and then it will start to blend. And because it kind of is a dry batter, it will just take a minute to get going. All right, so it's still going. I'm just gonna go ahead and push some of the dry batter down into the wet so it will mix a little smoother. All right, there we go. It's starting to move a little bit more. It is really thick batter. And if you use ripe bananas, it will be a little easier to blend because mine were not ripe as they should be. So now it's time to scoop your muffins into the muffin tin. So I have filled them up about half full um, and then I love to sprinkle a little bit of chocolate chips on top. This is a perfect job for the kids to do too. Now, if you're looking to be a little bit healthier, you don't have to add the chocolate chips, but I like the little added sweetness on top. All right, now we're ready to cook. We're gonna cook at 350 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. My oven cooks a little bit on the lower side, so I'm going 15. Now when they're done, they will pop up just a little bit. The chocolate chips will be a little bit melty, and then once they're cooled, I just pop them out of the container and they taste absolutely amazing. Okay, out of all the three recipes, although they all were really good, this tomato basil soup was amazing, and maybe because it's lunchtime and this is what I really wanted for lunch, but it was good. I'll see you on Monday. See ya.